let's talk, I want to talk about Creative Commons. You're doing, I have to say, I'll point people mm -hmm. to uh, the Creative Commons site because you're doing what sh uh, I'm thrilled to see kind of a history of Creative Commons right. and, and, and really talking about how it happened and what, it, what is Creative Commons? So it's really simple, basic idea. Give artists and authors a simple way to say the freedoms that they want to run with their content so that there's no ambiguity, there's no need to call a lawyer, you know what you can do, and you make it easy for other people to do stuff with it. What's wrong with the current copyright law? Why don't they just use that? Well, the problem is that the current copyright law, by default, says all rights are reserved. And whenever you use any creative copyrighted material, automatically the law says you've got a clear permission first. Now, of course, most people don't worry about that, uh, and most people do whatever the hell they want. Illegally. <laughs> Illegally, could be. Uh, yeah. But the problem is that we're moving into a world five years from now where technology will lock down the content, so you can only do precisely what you've gotten permission to do. Right. So the thing that we're really afraid of is that you know, when that world happens, we will have destroyed the potential of this technology to be used for all sorts of other fantastic creative stuff. So what we want to do is to build a kind of uh, uh, buttress of support for the expression of freedom running with content, and that's what the licenses do. They just basically say, use it in this way, and if you use it in that way, consistent with the license, then you're guaranteed to continue to make the stuff available. John, you wrote in an article in July that Creative Commons was humbug. <laughs> Did I use that word? Yeah, that's right it's here. It's a title. Oh, oh well, you know, that the copyeaters speak those oh, titles. Okay. But, I mean, What's there, your complaint? There's something. Well, I thought that, you know, I'm well protected now. What do I need all this other stuff for? Larry pointed something out to me recently, which I have to say is kind of distressing, which is that, uh, and you might want to explain this, which is why I can't go on my website and, and declare something to be in the public domain, which I always wanted to. Oh, was you I, could. You well, see, there you go. Now, tell us right. why this isn't. And this is like really changes my attitude about things, because if you can't, if I can't say, hey, look, you guys I can give you all you, rights. I give you all rights. Go steal it. Take it. It's yours, free. You know, because I, I write, do you know Photoshop things, or I yeah. write stuff that I don't care. Well, about. I've written software and done that. I've done that for years. Right. Well, yeah. what's the problem? Well, the, the point is, before 1976, there was essentially a thousand ways you could do that. But after 1976, the law changed and said copyright was automatic. And, and give us the, the history about the 1976 legislation. Does it have anything to do with Disney? Um, doesn't everything have something to do with Disney? <laughs> Does 76, not so much about Disney. But, but the fact is, before 76, copyright was what you could think of as an opt-in system. You had to raise your hand and say, I want protection. And a very small proportion of creative work had that kind of protection. The protection was all rights reserved. It made total sense. After 76, they changed the law. So by default, everything is automatically protected, right? You so you scribble. don't have to really do anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't, you don't have, have to, to put a C in no. 1970. You don't have to write no. copyright. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to put a date or anything. And then it's automatically protected now for a term of life of the author plus 70 or for corporate works 95 years. That has everything to do That's with this. That's a long time. Yeah. So if I live to 80, it's 150 years of copyright. That's exactly right. Yeah. Automatically. Automatically. Hey, it's a anything. bonanza for the copyright owners. But wait a minute. Right. I There's money copyright. to be made. Why can't I say I assert no rights? Well, the problem is that you know when you give a gift, like, that would be a gift. I, you know, Dvorak's work wouldn't be a gift, but yours would be a gift. Hey. Turn over to <laughs> and when you give a gift like that, you've got to tangibly deliver it. That's what the law says. Well, how do you tangibly uh, deliver a copyright? Right? It's just an intangible thing. I right? couldn't so, write a letter and say, here's the letter. So we have a routine at Creative Commons where you can put stuff in the public domain. Yeah. Basically, you know, take a rubber chicken, shake it over your head, spin around six times, scream public domain. I did and that's that, enough to it's fun. signal, maybe. <laughs> We're not sure whether that actually works, but the point is there's no easy way to do it. But the other thing is, it's kind of weird talk about if you ask me. So is there, has, nobody's said that the Creative Commons is legal and effective then? Well, Creative Commons licenses don't put things in the public domain. Right? Ah, so, so that's how they're different. So what you're basically doing is you're saying you have to do a couple things. The minimum is give me attribution. Um, and the maximum is, for example, can't use it for commercial work, have to release it in a share-alike. That's, kind of that's our copy or, or license on this, is, right. is non-commercial, share-alike. What if you want to say, what if you want to release it without, like, say, oh, I say, you know, I don't care. You can not, you can take, you can say you wrote it, you can do, you can sell it commercially, yeah. I don't care. Is yeah. that part of the creative That's comments? public domain, and we have a routine to try to put something into the public domain, and it takes a couple formal steps, and you have to go through a, a document. So it's a, process. It's, a, it's painful. It's a painful process. Because 
because they made it, it makes so no in 1976. Sense. Well, I mean, that was, the idea was to protect, you know, you know, the copyright. You know, I would, I almost said, made the mistake of saying that's to protect authors and create and creative right. types. <laughs> but in fact, we all know this was to done done to 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 protect the copyright owners. And many times, and most writers know this, is that most uh, publications now try to steal all your rights. They, when you, they won't even buy buy. Right. The, ah, we won't give you anything. You it's almost rights. impossible for writers to get. You know all their rights, and you know just That's sell exactly the first right. North American. They are, they sell. Well, they you know we buy everything. Magazines, uh, actually books. You can. It's pretty Fiction, easy to keep. You can your, hold on to now. Yeah, with most books, you can. Yeah. But with with magazines, magazines newspapers. Like a, I've, I've I've been offered my rights twice in ten years of magazines. Well, I, I always insist on mine, and and most people read my stuff like you say, and they say, "What's it worth?" You know, so they give it to me. <laughs> so, uh, but generally, and I, but I also have a long history of like demanding at, at least shared. Copyright, so it's like copyright by both. Mm-hmm. So at least I can give permissions, and nobody cares about it. And it's, you know, because a lot of people will say, "Hey, can I reprint this or that?" And I'll say, "Yeah, but you have to put re- reprint it by permission of author and then copyright, you know, whatever." Even though apparently you don't have to even do that. But uh, so I, generally speaking, the copyright. These, these big corporations that just bought up all these copyrights, and they're just, yeah. just a scam. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was young and ignorant, I thought, "Oh, that's cool. I just have to publish something, and it's automatically copyrighted. I'm protected." And I mean, that's not a bad thing. And you uh, were. It's, uh, and I was. It's, I guess what's bad is I, the, I thought I was giving other stuff away, and I wasn't. You weren't. And, and I don't think it was bad. I don't think the system in 1976 was bad before the Internet. The problem is you come to the world of the Internet, and right. everybody has these mm-hmm. assumptions about how they intend people to be able to use their work. The and now says, they can insist on it. Now they now can they enforce can it. On it. Right. But, but the law says that those assumptions don't mean anything until right. they're expressed in some formal way. Right. So what we're trying to do is to make it easy for people to you know, express the kind of freedoms they think ought to with their content. Now, now, I know if we ever um, take this video or the audio, I, we won't ever do it with the audio. We're never going to, it's always going to be that licensed that way and we'll always have it unprotected. But a video might well, for instance, if we were able to sell it on the Apple store, they might say, you got to use our DRM or Audible might say, you got to use our DRM. Why would Apple care whether we use their DRM to protect our content? I don't know. Uh, Audible would. I already, uh, you know, I, I know for a but fact. But why? That I don't get I don't, it. I guess that's just how it's their system works. probably tied into their mechanism. Yeah. Ah. That's okay. their payment That's mechanism. probably right. It's probably and and I'll tell you why Apple would, because they get a percentage, a large percentage. So they, have, they now suddenly are rights holders. They want, they have an interest in it. So that kind of screws well, screws everything up. And I think it? that one of the things that, that I that I like about some, some of the newer stuff with Creative Commons is, is also the time thing. Because, I, you know, what shortening the time frame to 14 years or you can extend it because tr- even, even that's longer than with a lot of the stuff that I create you know I'm really interested in having a lot of rights for the first five years you know maybe 10 years mm-hmm. 14 years is by you know most of the stuff that we're doing now is but how about 150 years? years but I don't need it you know and the thing is is I'd be happy to like you know I'd love right. to have a cascade where I go you know I'm I want all the rights for the first two years I want some of these rights for the next five years and I want no rights after that. Yeah. You know, and those are the kind of things that, that I, you know, because you want to be able to extend it. And I think that most of us, I know for, you know, I have a company that makes products, you know, and 90% of our revenue comes in the first. Yeah, but there could know, always, always right. be that cash cow that just, you know, is one of, like the Mickey Mouse character that, you know, you're going to, you, you want know, to it's an annuity, you you're going to be making yeah. money. Yeah, but I'm not sure, I guess I'm not sure if it's even, if that's even reasonable. Well, what else is <laughs> I mean, well, for you, you maybe. No, no, but I mean, I mean I, it, but Disney used. You know, it's not reasonable. It's a, it's a complete, ridiculous I, situation. I people. get that it makes a lot you, of money. You know, a lot of things. The thing that's been ignored here is the cultural implications, and the reason. Right. And the reason that copyright is, you know, was set up in a certain way to, to allow stuff to drop into the public domain after just a very few years, twenty six and whatever, and with a renewal maybe, is that it had cultural implications. Right. And public domain is important. One of the things that, that that people aren't noticing is that because you know uh, works of art, oil paintings, for example, we are still stuck essentially in the impressionist era because all Nothing like for, since has been in the public. You domain. can't get Picasso on the public domain. Yeah, it has point. to be licensed. Yeah. So, so essentially, the entire mechanism for improving you know, our condition based on art is frozen in time, about 1910. Yeah, and this is, this is again, much worse because of the implication with digital technology. So, take um, music, right? The remix of music, the kind of extension of hip-hop. In mash-ups. Context of mash-ups, right. Um, courts have held that there is no fair use right at all 
to sample music, right? You can sample compositions the way jazz musicians do, but you can't take one second out of a recording without clearing the rights up front, right? So we've got a billion machines out there for making music, but the only way to do it legally through this mashup or remixing type technology is to hire a lawyer who's going to clear all the rights. Or for use this. legal samples. I mean, there there have been cases where artists have released samples on CDs that you could buy, and as long as you attributed them, I mean, the the guys from right. Funk did. So this. there's a beginning of that in a commercial context, and Creative right. Commons is pushing it in this more general non-commercial. There's context. a lot the of point Creative is, Commons music now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But the point is, the idea that just as the technology it makes it so anybody can be part can be a cr- composer in a certain sense, the law comes in and pulls this away is crazy, and especially because of this. I think John's point's exactly right. The way it implicates culture. I mean, the only people who can legally produce are people who can afford lawyers that stand next to them. And that's exactly what you don't want in an era where digital technology lets exactly. everybody be a creator. That's exactly Why should we tie how, Okay, let's, let's take a step back. I mean, the idea of creation is noble, but how much of this is about creation is how much of this is about an entire generation of people who have basically between, you know, BitTorrent and going back to, uh, going back to Napster have decided that they really don't ever have to pay for any content again. I mean, yeah. is that a legitimate choice? I mean, I realize that we're watching the dinosauring of an entire publishing yeah. system. No, I, it's know, a great I mean, point. I, the, the, I don't, I don't support the idea of people taking other people's content without permission. I don't, you know, if I thought, if I thought this battle was about whether you could listen to Britney Spears for free, I'd be on the other side because I don't think you should listen to Britney Spears at any point. <laughs> right? So it's not about getting yeah, content but, for know, free. They also tried to rip the impressionist paintings off the walls because they were so disturbing. Well, I mean, maybe, not that right. I think in 50 years we're going to look back and think that this was a life-changing Britney, point in music. Right. And, and but but there's that happening with kids and technology. But in addition to that, right. there's extraordinary te- there's extraordinary creativity. Do you know about the AMV culture? This is fascinating. There's this thing called anime music video. Oh yeah, hundred thousand kids, mainly Americans, sure. who record all of the anime series that they can, and then they re-edit it, mm-hmm. setting it to music or setting it to video trailers. Mm-hmm. And so they have these extraordinary productions, all you know, made on their old IMAX up in their bedrooms, that are extraordinarily creative. But it's all taken. And found work. They can and, do it's all, it. and it's legal. It's yeah. not legal at all. Right? Look so. at the, the great Halo, uh, what is it called? Red, uh, red, what is it? Red versus blue. Yeah, I love that. They take Halo uh, f- footage from the game and they mm-hmm. put dialogue behind it. That's a, cr- a wonderful, creative thing. And I think mashups too are, it's like are great. What's up, Tiger Lily? What's up? Exactly. Which what was pre 1976. So I guess you could. So the, the real issue is, I think, Patrick, you're, is that you're in a way undermining an artist's right to make money. You're undermining copyright because if you prevent any kind of fair use, mm-hmm. you're just creating a whole generation of people who says, well, screw it. Yeah. Well, that, I think that that's the thing. I mean, uh, the. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you make more laws, you make more criminals. That's you know, out of nothing. And 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 and, and, the, and, and the issue is, is that, um, you know, there's a lot of states. There's statistics that'll say, you know, someone who smokes marijuana will then move on to harder drugs. And a lot of people will argue that the reason they'll move on to harder drugs is because they've been pushed criminalized. into an illicit yeah. and into an illicit area, not yeah. because marijuana itself is the leader to that. And in the same way, you know, we're going. Everything is illegal, no matter how you touch it. So that we. From the time I was ten years old, we were recording our friends' albums and making mixes. We'd all get together and you know, rec- you know, make mixtapes and stuff like that. All of that was illegal. You know, but, and so the well, thing. Well, no, actually, that was clear by well, the Well, that was clear, but now it's not. I mean, but now they're talking about if I want to move you can't an do it iPod, in a digital context. It, you can, yeah, yeah, only yeah, can't only in analog, analog exactly. not in digital. Yeah. And so the thing is, is that what we're doing is creating a lot of people. If we made it easy, if we if we bring the you know even like the you know ninety nine cents. Now I, there's a mechanism issue with making it any less than that, and mostly. Related to Visa, <laughs> and 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 to the, um, so it can't get much lower than that. It's but micro payment. But issue. if you made it yeah. twenty five cents or forty cents per song, it would just be too much trouble to go get it somewhere right. else. Right, I agree with that. I've always money. believed this you know, too. And, 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 and but the I rest of what you're saying is you're talking about the Sovietization of the American exactly culture, right. where essentially, like what, my first time I went to Russia, I always got the biggest kick out of this. They told you you couldn't carry Russian. This is during the, when they were still communists. Yeah. You couldn't have Russian currency out. Outside the Russian border, and outside the Russian border included, you can't the, live on less than twenty-five whatever. Well, the, the, the joke of it was you can't have the currency yeah. outside, and the, and the border actually began it when you entered the airport. There's actually a line where you were out. Give, that, give us your money. No, you were in, you were at a point, but the thing is to get inside to the terminal, which was essentially where you were, was essentially outside the country. You couldn't legally have Russian currency. All 
all the carts that you pushed around that cost like a couple of rubles were outside. Right. So you had to have currency outside to use a cart. And it was like, <laughs> so you had to break the law immediately. <laughs> and the Russian system, which I think is what's happening here, is making everybody a criminal. So you can just, at any given point, just pick uh, up so anybody. Exactly right. You pick up you, you, you exactly got right. it, you I committed debated, a bunch I debated Hillary Rosen down at USC. And I was laying this out. I was saying, basically, anything you do, you're Former a head of the RIAA. Uh, RIAA. And she said, that's right. Basically, everybody's always violating the law, but you should trust us to be <laughs> suing the people who ought to be sued. When and they then, say you know, trust exactly us... When I had exactly the sense of it, what John said, this is the Sovietization of American culture. We have this extraordinarily creative class that lives in the black market, right? They're black market creators. Right? And it's happening. And, and that's and the you point. You haven't shut you this down. Those kids. They were incredibly intelligent. They were really uh, uh, entrepreneurs, but they all lived in the black market. And I say, you know, why the hell in a democracy... Should we have something like the black market living like that? Like, if you, you know, if the system is bad, we should be changing it. Right. But that's, of course, not happening. Well, and, 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 the, and the funny thing is, is it would probably make it better. Yeah. In the long run, who cares? I mean, eventually this whole edifice is going to crumble and fall, yes? No. Really? Why do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> because you have a massive underground growing all the time of people who are ignoring copyright law. Oh, well, no, I, I train lawyers for a living, right? And so you stand in front of a class and you try to tell them why they're supposed to follow legal ethics. And they think about the last 10 years of their life where they've done nothing but break the law every single day of their life. We pay and a price say, for that, for yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a corrosive effect it's corrosive. on society. This is the yeah. one thing that Valenti and I, Jack Valenti, had the former head of the MPAA, and I agree about this. It's awful that you raise a generation of kids breaking the law. But his response is, Throw let's find jail. a more effective way to wage <laughs> war against the enemy. Right. And my response is, let's find a better Change law so that yeah. normal behavior isn't criminal. Well, and I think that when they create these rules, and if they if they were, I mean, I personally sometimes think that, that I hope that they are able to fully enforce the law, fully enforce everything that they're, that they're talking about, because it will create a gap that a lot of other people can move in on. Because if, it's, it, beca- if it becomes so hard to use that music, if it becomes so hard oh, because of all right. the DRM, yeah. other people that are using, for instance, stuff like MySpace, you know, and they're, you know, these bands are selling a half a million albums, you know, with no record company, you know, and, and when and, and as and, and as Apple gets bigger and bigger with iTunes, and as and as you know, for instance, the, the this video iPod, you know, it's going to take a couple years probably to figure out the SAG versus the Directors Guild versus. Oh, all they're already these, no, that's, the, that's the, the whole issue. Right, they're the already pay, going. Sorry, hey, 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 wait, hey, we want a piece of this. You guys yeah. are going to start throwing this point two cents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, and the pay. thing is, is that's going to lock them up, and it's going to open the opportunity for a lot of us doing shows like this to go on that small screen and fill that void that they're yeah, creating right. by right. by stopping all of this stuff you know and that, and and they and they're, and they're leaving money on the table because everyone's just bit torning it you know okay i can't get it on itunes i'm going to go find it well you know you the know? one thing though that happened which i think you know the directors guild and all these people in sag are worried about you know getting ripped off on this is because because for so many years they got ripped off on the DVD after they did a movie. There was like, you know, the DVDs were, were, were not were considered like toys. I mean, they weren't given their full percentages off of those sales of DVDs. And as Hollywood shifted toward the DVD as its really primary source of income, these guys were screwed out of the, all, all the money. And now, well, of course, they're changing those, those I would contracts. Say they, were screwed. they were screwed. They only got paid $20 million for the film, and they didn't get another penny after that. You know, well, you know, I mean, you know, you know, there's plenty of people you know, that, I mean, that, that don't make the 20 mil. No, there are, but they're still doing okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not. Know, I'm, I'm so feel so so bad for these people. You know, I mean, you know, so they made. But I'm just saying, they, they were just, only in the top. Yeah, 1% I know, but they just saw this is, money going down the drain. Can we compare this to software? Is there is there an analogy in free software? I know you're a big proponent of free software, and always have been, uh, Larry. Um, is there an analogy here? I mean, is. Uh, is proprietary well, we, we software? We created Creative Commons stealing the idea of the free software movement, right? right. So free DGL. software gave away f- copyright licenses to make it sh- make clear that uh, software would remain in a space where people could build on it without fearing it proprietization. Mm-hmm. It's, what we've done is different from free software because free software has basically, the free software movement has basically one core license, the GPL, which is copy left it, and Creative Commons has six licenses, a range. Um, but it's the same intuition. It's a little bit different, though, because, you know, when they started free software, they started it because the culture was increasingly producing proprietary software, and that was something new. But there's always been a proprietary culture. It's not like, you know, we began having uh, record companies five years ago. There's always been a proprietary culture. But the difference is 
before the internet, I think it was more balanced, right? There's lots of ways to use culture that wasn't regulated by copyright law. You read a book, that's not a fair use of the book. It's a free use of the book. There's no copyright implication there at all. But you do the same thing on a digital network. It necessarily produces a copy. It necessarily triggers copyright law. So there's nothing you can do in the digital world that doesn't trigger copyright law in some sense. So, so the proprietary nature of culture in the digital world is more com- controlling than it was in the analog. What do we do? Should we, uh, uh, I mean, is there an action that uh, we as citizens need to take? Should um, we write our members of Congress? Well, should first we... you should write John and tell him his article about Creative Commons was wrong. I think he's uh, retracted you actually, that. No, yeah. I don't. You know, I never said that. You know, my column was never wrong. My column was questioning, like, right. the I value of people, it. No, no, that wasn't it either. I was saying, I don't get it. Why Will do somebody we need explain? It? No. Right. Right. I was saying, I don't get it. Will somebody explain it to me, please? And yeah, he explained it. I finally got my explanation. Sometimes you've got to go you public. Need to write another one. <laughs> get, well, it's doing fine. I don't need my help. But the point is, is that sometimes you've got to go public with, with bathrooms. Supplement, which I do, and which it's is a, appropriate. Yeah, I'm saying, hey, I don't get it. You know, somebody. If, if you don't, many others and don't. Meanwhile, and I way. noticed that a lot of people that that responded to that column, it's on PCMag.com, by the way, uh, that column, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that column, they they didn't get it either, but they were just giving me crap because you know I, I said something bad the about Larry, yeah. who's like some hero yeah. amongst yeah. a bunch of nerds and geeks. Well, I, that was my reaction, frankly. I, I, I couldn't believe you. And I, I think that the, you know, um, I'm I what I one of the things that I think is the most important because we do a lot of work in Africa, you know, doing design. We have a lot of members in Africa, and, we, and we're and we designing. So the developing nations license, I think, is important. We sell, I know we sell our software that we create at 10% of what we sell it in the rest of the world, mm-hmm. you know, because that is something that, I, that you know, Talk I a little bit about that, uh, Larry, because I think that Cory Doctor is also using that for his latest book, the, yes, uh, the Third right. World License, I, or what, I'm sorry, Developing, developing Nations license. license, right. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, th- the basic idea here was that if you can put something on a Developing Nations license, that means in a developing nation, you can do whatever you want with this. Outside of the developing nations, ordinary rules apply. And we started this because we were asked by Jamie Love, who's a big uh, activist in this area, to build this license, so we did. Um, But the thing that was coolest that surprised me about it was there's a bunch of architects who are designing low-cost housing, right? And they've stamped all of their uh, designs with Creative Commons Developing Nations licenses, meaning people in developing nations can take these designs, do whatever the hell they want with them. But outside of the developing world, you got to deal with them in the ordinary copyright way. So it's just trying to facilitate spread into markets where you know it wouldn't spread otherwise, and you don't want to call somebody a pirate because they're building on your ideas in those markets. Um, and so, so you're that's, doing that's that with your software. Corey's we'll do doing that with, that with his book. Like well, with the Pixelcore, we have a membership that people pay for, and then if you're from Africa specifically, you don't pay. There's no membership fee. You know, so you know that's a uh, you know that that's it's how you know, the that is exactly the same license um, yeah. of that process because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it, our our membership per year costs four hundred twenty dollars a year. That represents you know four months of work for the average person that's that's in Zimbabwe, which is so where we have a lot of members. Working, it just doesn't make any sense. Really, what if they have a job? If right? they have a job, I mean, yeah. you know, the, it it doesn't make any sense in a whole lot of ways. If I want to expand, if I want to create opportunity there, you know, it, you know, for bis- good business opportunity. I mean, we do it primarily because I think it's good business. I'm not, you know, I'm. I think it makes a difference, but I also think it's good business. What I want is as many people able to do that yeah, no, as that's possible. That's a great point. So, you know, we, so I, in the context of the arts, never go around telling artists what they ought to do to give away their work. Right? I'm not trying to guilt anybody into giving away their rights. What we think is this might be a more effective way to, to make your work succeed. Right? That's the message there. Context of science, we have a pro- related project, the Science Commons. Um, it's very different. I mean, I think scientists have an ethic. It's an obligation, not just to produce knowledge, but to produce knowledge that's universally accessible. Because, you know, if you're in Africa, you can't pay a penny for the cost of access to, um, you know, a, a journal that might cost $10,000 a year to, uh, to be distributed in Africa. So I think scientists have a moral obligation, in some sense, to make their work available in the way that artists don't. So Creative Commons is just about Here's a bunch of tools. You figure out what works best for you. If you want to go the Hollywood route, more power to you. But if you want to have a more flexible system that might give you wider access, then we're just going to make it easy well, for you. Well, you're not losing anything either. I mean, when you're a software developer giving away software in Africa... You wouldn't be Africa, selling it you, there anyway. They, they steal it anyway. I mean, I, I was in Zimbabwe for a month, and a bunch of movies came out. 
I had them two days after they were released to the theaters here. In China, you and, get them but two weeks earlier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was, you know, and, and so the thing is, is that it, it is, it is, um, you're not losing anything. You're just, you're just, you're getting to know who they are. You, you are, you know, expanding into that market. You are, and when it builds up, you can change how that looks. You know, when people yeah. have the money to do it. Well, I mean, the it thing. never happen. But if you, it will definitely never happen if it's a culture of, of people doing it illegally and, and they have no intention of I ever don't know. Going I back, wonder about know? that because China is, you know, has both, you know, you have mixed messages because if you take a look at the, the, the amount of money people make on a monthly basis in China and the fact that they're very heavily in the piracy and that you can get these DVDs, very high quality ones and, and, and crappy ones, but mostly you can get the good ones. They're called DVD 9s if you're over there looking around. Um, <laughs> not that I've, there a, not that I've ever seen them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they tend to be there's something fo- there's something kind of fishy about it because the, the, when you see these things you can tell that they're from the master tapes. I mean this is the data. This oh, yeah. is the real deal. It's not like you know except they leave out some of the special features and stuff. They get other stuff because the thing hasn't been quite finished. But uh, so there's a leak well, in the lab somewhere. It's so deep or, there that it could that be Hollywood looking for some extra income back door. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty suspicious. How do they get it? I mean you walk you walk into you walk into the in, in the airport. And Harari, and they have DVDs where they have three movies on the same DVD. On the same, you know, DVD, they've they've squished all three movies. Yeah, you can do four X, you know, and, and so DVD. they, uh, you know, and, and that's not, that's just at a regular store. It's a big shiny store. It's not hey, like you're you know, if you go alleys. to Malaysia, then the big malls they got they got big stores that sell DVDs and good right. quality. And you can look at them. They let you sh- watch them, and it's a regular mall store. And then you can go down the hall, and they have a, a software store, right. and well, they have now, everything now available for a feel dollar. A sorry disc. for Hollywood. What, I mean, don't well, they have but some the thing is, is it's right the, to protect them you know, you, you, well, like he said earlier you because the 20 million bucks isn't enough for these guys I mean but you know there's there's you're talking about way different things I mean like there's there's some funny no, I agree that, that, you know you know why pirating open, movies on BitTorrent is keeping Bob from having a job no I'm not I'm not arguing at all about this and the fact of the matter is the real problem for Hollywood are these massive production factories which not you and me not some guy downloading something from BitTorrent after for eight hours. Right, right. I mean, what kind of loss of money is that compared right. to some guys cranking these things? These are pressed. Yeah. These are not like burned discs. They're pressed. They're pressed on a sheet. Well, and, and they go after those guys. I mean, they're no, they all don't. The time. Well, they seem to be. Maybe they're oh, just. I think it's a bunch of BS. Personally, they they plow over a bunch of discs they can't well, sell, and they make a big deal about it. Only a lot less successful, if you can imagine. Was it you, Alex, who were telling me there, there's there are places there, uh, somewhere in Africa? There's a very vital film community. But they have to crank out a oh, lot of movies. Well, in Nigeria, I was talking to a, a friend of mine's a Nigerian filmmaker, and, and I got so a letter from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he, 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 he has some money in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but in Nigeria, they make in Nigeria makes more films than anywhere else in the world. So it's more it than is India. More, more than yes. India. Wow. Um, India makes more than Hollywood, but Nigeria makes more. But they're all about fifteen thousand dollars films, and a lot of them are these kind of soap opera, yeah. you know, type of things. And and but I was talking about I was talking to him about the business model, and he said the deal is is we we do we shoot the film, we get it to the theaters and we get the DVD out as fast as we can. We've got about a week to make all of our money back, and then after that, the piracy takes over, and I'll never see another penny. But their entire what they did is instead of tell- trying to enforce it, which in Nigeria would be impossible, they built a business model around what worked. Right. You know, and, and these guys are some of them are doing pretty well. They just it's just a whole different and business. This, model. this was directly driven by piracy uh, because originally it was Hollywood videos which they were mm-hmm. pirating, and that built an infrastructure of VCRs in people's houses, right? Because people wanted to have the so then you had this infrastructure of VCRs and then they could start doing their own Nigerian movies and take advantage of this infrastructure of VCRs and have this model that was, you know, very profitable but very different from the model of Hollywood. Yeah. And they make that's a, an, actually an interesting uh, progression, mm-hmm. yeah. Hollywood say, would say that's where we're headed, right? If yeah, we don't well, actually, do something about watch, this, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to get, you know, Sylvester Stallone movies if anymore. If you watch the, the, some of the trade stuff going on, they're, they're already talking about moving that DVD release date closer and closer and closer. And I don't understand personally, because I think that people who really like a movie will, will go to the movie and buy the DVD or buy the DVD and go to the movie both. But I think that if you went to a first-run movie and they were selling the DVD of at that the film theater, at right. the theater, yeah. only at the theater, by the way, yeah. for the first run, yeah. I think they would get huge sales off of yeah. that and people would have a good time. And the, other thing, the other thing that's really cool is if you go... Well, yeah, no, obviously. But with, the, with the, uh, what's his name? The, what's that movie that came out with the you know, with the uh, spaceship guys? Serenity. Serenity. Rock that stars be have been so. doing that for years. They sell a CD exactly as you walk right. out the door. But if you, if you go to Singapore, which of course has been suffering because of this piracy for a long time, and you go to a movie theater, it's an extraordinary experience. It's a first-class experience because they realize the only way to get you to come to the movie theater is if they make it really great. So you can get great food served to you, drinks 
drinks served to you as you're watching a movie. Um, and it's all a sort of competitive way to, to try to beat the piracy. I think we're moving that way. Well, in, the they're, in Europe, they've had, you know, they got kind great of thing. taquitos now, in my theater. Larry, have any mainstream artists or labels or movie companies looked at Creative Commons as a way of distributing them? So um, the answer is yes. And they're basically next generation people who are looking at it. Um, so in if the, you're already Metallica, you don't, that's you, right. you don't need to do that. Although, you know, people, when Wired released the Wired CD that had people like David Byrne and the Beastie Boys and Chuck D and Gilberto Gil um, releasing tracks under the license that allowed people to remix it, that was the first time we kind of cracked into that, into that space. <laughs> 